to the Fearless Curious Soul. Goldilocks Productions presents The Deep Reading. <laughs> Connecting you to your soul show. Hi, this is Suzanne Wyman, and welcome to The Deep Reading, Connecting You to Your Soul. And thank you very much for joining me today. I want you to know that the universe supports you. If you're listening to the show and you hear part of the conversation and you think it relates to you, be sure to be accepting of that sign, that omen, that indication that shows you that you've tuned into the right time, the right place, for the right reasons in order to hear a message that supports you because the universe supports you. The universe has got your back. And hopefully, the conversation that we have today is an answer to your prayers. I like the deep reading. I want to go past the superficial process. I want to go into the deepest part. I want to show you how you can reconnect to your soul, demonstrate your true soul's purpose, and carry that out into the world. You can call me directly on my telephone at 714-400-7384. And you can look at my webpage, which is the best party psychic ever. So today's conversation is going to be about the uh, family dynamics and what happens within those family dynamics. People choosing to be born within a specific family, people choosing to live out a karmic pattern within that family, and what that really means. So my favorite author on this subject is James Redfield. His first book was The uh, Celestine Prophecy. And he goes into how a spirit chooses a family in order to understand their karmic equation today in the world. So, the telephone number to call in and uh, maybe get a spot to do a short reading with me today is area code 206 806 9965. And the topic today is family. We're talking about family dynamics, family agreements. And when you choose your mother and father, you've chosen them for karmic reasons, spiritual reasons, or an experience for this lifetime, and that family provides you with a perfect vehicle. I do a lot of palmistry in my work. It's an ideal um, aspect to use because a person simply holds their hands up in front of me and it looks to me like reading a map. You hold up your hands, I look at your hands, and I tell you your story as it appears in your hands. Now only you know if that's a true story or an untrue story. And so I like it because I see more headline, lifeline disconnects at this point in time. Uh, Historically, it's supposed to be the rarest marking And it shows up so much, I really believe that it is people that have died before the time that they were supposed to die. And within the spiritual equation, they've agreed to be reborn very quickly. And what you see is people that are on a hero's journey. They're willing to uh, do the path of being a hero. And what that actually comes to mean is that the person has a grace card from a past life where they didn't get to fulfill their life's mission. They're reborn very quickly, somewhere between three to five years after the passing, which in the spirit world is is rapid. And then they're born into this lifetime, and they fulfill the unfinished piece of work in this lifetime, but a little bit easier. So I'm ready for my first caller, and uh, today's topic is uh, a good topic for our first caller and let's see if we can get him dropped in and it's all about family everything is about family the whole story begins of humanity with what happens within the family dynamic so okay chris hi yeah this is chris hey how are you today good how are you doing Really good. Really, I really appreciate your time. I know you've got a full load of work on your plate. You've got work. You've got school. You've got family. Yes. And so <laughs> um, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, what, 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 uh, what's, what's our question about today, Chris? 
Um, just about how I can um, just stay focused and on on school and and what I can do to help finish that. Um, how my family, you know, might might help or um, about how. Yeah, just how to how to stay motivated, I suppose. Mhm. Okay. Really good. So, Chris, you know, you kind of have a real complicated family story. You know, your father had um, two kidney transplants. Your mother had a liver transplant, and um, yet still, you know, your parents managed to have children. So, you kind of have a very complicated family um, history that goes with your story, right? Mhm. Okay. Yes. And so, so you're you're the smartest. You're one of the smartest young men that I know today, and you're working really hard in order to finish your college degree. And now you really, I really think you're destined for greatness, and I really can't say it any other way. You're an expert. You're destined for greatness. You've always been incredibly um, smart. School hasn't ever really been difficult for you able to sort of metabolize information and and go forward in your journey. So you are supposed to achieve greatness. You are supposed to make a real difference in the world. Is there anything in particular that you're interested in, you personally, just for yourself, nobody else, just you? Uh, Science, I suppose. Well, well, the the means of science to help others, I guess. (laughs) That's probably a better way to put it. I like that. Talk about that, please. Um, well, considering yeah, my family history, I've, I've kind of been kind of been um, inspired to use to use my um, my intrigue of science to to use it to help others. Um, okay. I, I think it's something that, that I'm passionate about. Oh, good. That's a that's an extremely noble and high calling. The scientific process. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to think if I can remember your feet markings, and I think your foot markings do have, like, the scientific toe markings on it. Um, The scientist is the person who's able to um, look at something that could make a change and could rewrite history, and then they take and simply pull that process apart, and then they start out with a premise, and then they go out in the world, and they change the world, and they make the world a better place for everyone. So... Mm -hmm. I do, I do believe that is the um, right track for you, and I do believe that you really, in your um, master's program, that you really are able to get the enjoyment out of that process. You have two, you, I think you just have two years of college required. Is that it? Uh, yes. Perfect. Okay. And, and if you could go anywhere in the world to do your master's, where would you go? Well... I would say something prestigious like like Berkeley. Um, mm-hmm. That that probably be my my dream, Berkeley or or UCLA. Okay, let's let's hold that dream. And I tell you, you know, you're going to be surprised that when you go to college, that you finish up the academic requirements very quickly. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. not it's not any big deal, and you do get accepted into a prestigious college. You do get the funding. You do get the Um, you know, you get all the funding, you get the loans, you get the scholarships, you get all those pieces. So once you actually get accepted into that, once you actually start attending your four-year program, I want you to give it everything. It is first, second, third, last, everything. And in three years, you'll be at the prestigious college of your choice, working on your um, scientific dream, and making the world a better place. So I'm really happy for you. You know, Chris, you're one of the most generous people that I know. You're generous in your heart without making it too complicated. You're generous in your attitude, and you're generous with your resources. So I'm really inspired by how generous you really are. I mean, in your heart of hearts, you really are the most generous person in this situation. So do you have another question about anything else that's going on right now, Chris? Um, no, no, that, thank you, no, that's, that's, that's about it. (laughs) Okay, (laughs) you sure? Um, maybe about how, um, just, you know, 
just motiv- motivation because it's been such a long process and the circumstances have been so hard. Um, it's, okay. it's kind of, you know, it's kind of draining. Right. Oh, thank you for being really authentic with this process. Thank you. So I think it's been, I think it's been a lot more than uh, most people, I think, in your situation would have just sort of, you know, figured, well, at this time I just can't do it, and they would have done something else. So you have, you have the right motivation. You do have the right stick in order to mm-hmm. make it happen. So please, if you think that, I'm sure that, I think your question is more about the fact, how do I, how do I get the sense of pleasure for the amount of work that I've had to do? And really, the situation is, is that it does shift. Once you, once you finish the um, junior college requirements and you go to your four-year program, what a difference it'll be. It'll be so much more freeing and so much more liberating. And I think you need to be right, very right. real. I think you need to be very realistic about the fact that you're going to have to take and um, take on some debt because it's just a very practical solution. If you want to get um, you want to get the best marks and graduate in the top of your class in order to get to a master's program, you really have to give it everything. You really can't be um, right. You just have to be just about yourself. And it's not, I want you to know, it is in no way being selfish in order to achieve this goal because after you finish this and you go on to Berkeley and you get accepted into their their program because they have a very prestigious program, then you're going to actually make the world a better place. So whatever you have to do here in this situation in order to get to that four-year program, absolutely please do it. And then the second comment I have for you is is that once you get to that four-year program, Choose what's absolutely the best for you and think of nobody else. Be sure and be very okay. selfish about this because <laughs> humanity is relying on you to mm-hmm. come forward and make your contribution. And so here's what I see as a psychic, not as somebody who knows you, but as a psychic, is, is that you um, end up in a scientific research and development project and that you end up taking and creating a series of changes. So it's not just one change that you're involved in. You spend a lifetime in research, and you make many, many, many changes. So it's like it's in your DNA. Chris, you're just really smart and really talented. But part of, part of it, I, I really wish you... Oh, you're very welcome. I wish you could kind of find somebody to talk to because... First of all, you are enough. And that's one of the first thing I want you to start telling yourself is I am enough. And the second okay. thing is is that this is temporary. This is a temporary mm-hmm. set of circumstances. It is not in any way permanent. And then the third mm-hmm. thing is is that the goal and the um, dream, and let's call it the dream, the dream will manifest as long as you believe in it and you continue to work hard for it. So that's the whole sort of story that I think is really important for you as a person, okay? So this is a very temporary situation, and then it does achieve your dream. You've had the dream of taking and going to Berkeley and being part of that scientific community for as long as I can remember you talking about college, so it (laughs) does happen, okay? Okay. (laughs) I like that. So... um, but I think, I think the thing that you kind of need to acknowledge to yourself is, is that some of the obstacles you've had to face from very early in your life are not mm-hmm. the same sort of obstacles that other people face. Mm-hmm. So you kind of got to take a deep breath and realize no matter what has happened, you have always gone forward. And um, that's because you have a dream. That's because you have a belief that you should be part of of a scientific community that creates change and makes um, people's health and the world a better place. So even if it's been difficult, the dream has been supported. And I kind of think you kind of need to, like, look at that part of it because it's real easy to get caught up in the fact that there isn't necessarily um, a lot of freedom in your situation. And really what yeah. you do need is you need time and money freedom just for a short period of time to kind of get your perspective back. And that's why I really recommend that when you go to your four-year college that you just you take the time that you need and you take the money that you need and you know realize that taking care of your emotional health, your mental health, your physical health 
are all just as important as your academic, um, you know, you've always been incredibly brilliant, so academics are not difficult, but at this point in time, we really need to see who you are, and then you need to hit yeah. the highest note, okay? But yeah. I'm really inspired by you. I think you're incredibly talented, and I think you should sit down occasionally and just congratulate yourself for staying with it. I mean, you know, that's what you really need to do, is that you have stayed with it. That's the important point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And okay, thank I, you. Thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. And please, um, oh, and please give me a call and let me know if I can, you know, give you the support and the encouragement through a phone call or a conversation anytime. You're welcome to my time, Chris, honestly. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Oh, thank you very much. All right. Have a great day. What a great, what a great question. Um, so, what what happens in the world today? We've made all these advances, and I don't think that you know people really take a fine tuned look at what happens, you know, within the fi- family dynamic. Um, the family dynamic has now changed. What was traditionally a family. Uh, is no longer a traditional family. Non-traditional families are kind of a norm. But then people surviving, um, you know, major health issues and continuing on with their family is also another process. So um, it is inspiring to speak with a young man who has um, stuck with it no matter what and has worked hard in order to achieve his academic dream. And as long as I've been talking to Chris, he wants to go to Berkeley and be part of the um, scientific department there and be part of that community. I'm sure I haven't got the words correct, but basically that's the premise. Uh, And brilliant, just incredibly brilliant. And he's never stopped. He has just never stopped. He's just moved along and (sighs) just been great. So... And I'm waiting for my next caller. As soon as my next caller joins me, we'll go on to the next reading. And once again, the conversation today is about family, family inspiration, family support, uh, family encouragement, uh, unconventional family dynamics, and how family dynamics seem to continue on no matter what we do. Um, health issues, divorce, remarriage, step families, and then, of course, uh, my favorite one that I'm suggesting to people on a regular basis at the moment is to take and put their DNA into Ancestry.com and find out if there's any other half-siblings that they didn't know about before. And without a doubt, each time I put somebody on that little journey, they come forward and they find out they have at least one or two siblings. Hello, Carolyn. Are you there? I am here. Hello, my dear. How are you? What an honor. I'm good. What a privilege to talk to you. You and your husband are two of my favorite people, so I'm very excited to be here. <laughs> uh, you, have, you have such an uh, interesting position in the world and who you connect with and who you support and what you have done with your own life. That is, a, that is quite a bit of flattery and quite a sincere compliment. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> so sweet. You know, no, it's true. You know, you're one of the few people, I've known you for a really long time now. I think I've yeah. known you for more than 20 years now. Mm-hmm. Um, and the interesting thing is, is that you're the only, well, you're one of the few people, I know one other person who does it in part, but you're the only person I know of who, in complete thought process, you, in, in your complete thought process, you use the process of talking to intuitive psychics and mediums as a method of, um, creating therapy and a solution for yourself, and it has been it has been really effective. So, I absolutely do that, and I never <laughs> thought that you really noticed that. <laughs> I never really like I never put that together really until you reflected it back to me. I'm like, oh, I guess I do do that, don't I? <laughs> yeah. I can leave it to you to reflect it back. Oh, I do. So, I do. You do. Um, yeah. So. Um, and you have your own podcast going at the moment. I do. I do. Hollywood Gatekeepers. 
I'm a writer, and I help people analyze and write screenplays. Cool. Yeah. Really awesome. cool. It, it is, um, writing is probably of all the artistic, I consider myself an artist of the conversation, but the artist of yes, writing sure. is, is, oh, thank you, is the most solitary, uh, inward, sort of taking and ripping material from outside of yourself and then trying to put it onto paper in such a way that somebody else can understand exactly what you ripped out of your inner. <laughs> Simple. I know. <laughs> And if you don't have um, an emotional streak for masochism, chances are the material will not be um, powerful or um, disturbing enough to capture individuals. <laughs> That's so awesome. I call writers extroverted introverts. So they're, they're, they're sitting, you know, they're covered in crackers in their basement while they're digging into the deepest emotions that anybody will ever feel. <laughs> like, that's kind of the life of a writer. <laughs> it is. It really is. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you can, and you can understand why they would, um, I mean, um, I, you know, I never really got Hemingway. Maybe I tried reading Hemingway because everybody said Hemingway was great. But I think maybe I tried reading Hemingway when I was too young and I, I didn't mm-hmm. understand the full textures and the fabric of who Hemingway was about. Um, but mm-hmm. I've always enjoyed very, very intense uh, aspects of reading. And, and finally, I reached a point where I had read so much and I had nobody to talk about it, I just basically kind of flipped it, flipped it off. But I can, mm-hmm. I can read a lot of material really quickly. So if I take a trip or something like that, I can read two or three books in a day. So, mm-hmm. um, and, I, and I have several books that I read once a year. But writing is hard. It is really hard to <laughs> stand. I only have one favorite quote from Jane Fonda, and Jane Fonda's <laughs> quote is, Hollywood needs more great writers. <laughs> it is hard. You're right. There's a great movie called Hamlet 2 where he's sitting at the typewriter trying to write a play, and he suddenly goes, writing is so hard. I love that. So you're reading, I mean, you say that you're reading people. Like, you're reading all day long every day. I mean, you're not really, you might not be reading text, but you're constantly reading all day, every day. You're reading what people are throwing at you. You're reading it. It's just, just a different type of reading, but it's all connected. And I try really hard to get our, our writers that we work with to tap into that, to read uh-huh. and tap into, you know, all of that reading. Huh. It's, a, yeah. it's, a, just, it's just a sort of a – so first of all, when I'm out at the grocery store, for the most part, I've turned it off, and I'm not at work. I'm not thinking about mm-hmm. anything like that. I'm just doing it. But there are times when things show up, and, you know, I'll be out with my husband, and I'll go, well, can't you see that? And he goes, no. And I'm like, it's just so obvious. What do you mean you can't see that? So, um, but, um, <laughs> Yeah. Well, so, I, I, you know, it's so funny that you say that because I remember you telling me a story a long time ago about how when you were a child you wanted to chase the postman down the street to tell him about himself. Like you just like had this intuitive thing. And, it, I, you know, <laughs> knowing I was going to talk to you, it, I just love that story. And it made me start to think about the, kind of the whole thing and how psychics kind of get a bad rap, I think, because people like think that you're reaching into this like beyond the future, telling the future or whatever. And I really think that we're all intuitive. You're just tapped into that on a much deeper level than most people. And most people are afraid of that power and they don't want to own it in themselves. And so they come to you and then you reflecting back to them what they already know. They just can't admit that they're there. So you're like, you're the conduit to let them see it. And I think that it's like, you have to walk this fine line. Like you said, you can turn it off. That's the kind of amazing to me that you can do that. Um, I'm, I'm sure they had to learn how to do that because otherwise you'd go, <laughs> I would think, go kind of insane because you're constantly seeing, like you're constantly seeing stuff, and I think it's that you're tapped into it and you're not, not afraid of it. And I think most people are afraid of that, like in a big yeah. way. So we just shut that thing down, and you're just like, not only are you not afraid of it, you're like, it's like a big faucet that you're trying to pour <laughs> into the world, and you have to like <laughs> try to turn it off every once in a while. Like, somebody turn this faucet off. And I, I think it's like, that, I mean, that's how I see you all the time. That's why you're such a joy. Like, we don't see each other that often, but it's always such a joy when I see you because it's like oh. your floodgates can open, and I'm like, bring it on. <laughs> Let me see what you got. Uh, so, so fun. It is, 
It is interesting. Thank you for doing this conversation with me because it kind of puts yeah. me into perspective. So my story goes that if I don't work as a psychic, I'm going to end up taking and following the postman and telling him about his dog. So I've got to work <laughs> as a psychic. I just have to. And then the second, <laughs> the second point is, is that you have to learn it, turn, turn it off, or you do mm-hmm. get crazy. And then the third yeah. point is, is that I don't actually believe that anybody – ever needs a psychic. I think they want one, but mm-hmm. you could walk through life just fine without one. And so when I tell them, because I simply mirror that back to mm-hmm. them their process, when I tell them about themselves, most people don't have anything formulated for the future, and they don't have anything for me to tap in that way. And in that sense, uh, Intuition, psychic ability, and the connection in psychic ability is very much about that chemistry. Right. That's so, so cool. It's just all so cool. It's really interesting. And I kind of use, I mean, I use, when I see a psychic or I come to you, it's kind of like an overall guidance system is how I look at it. Like I'm looking at, because if you say something and then I have a visceral reaction to it and be like, oh, no, that's not right, then I go, okay, well, what's that? Then I can like, I can tap into my feeling and go, why is that bringing up, you know, fear, anger, angst, whatever? Or if I'm super thrilled by whatever you're saying, it's like, oh, okay, so it helps me kind of determine my own guidance system, which then will help me heal whatever I've got going on because it's just all kind of connected. And so it's so invaluable, I think. It's interesting that so many people <laughs> shy away from it. Yeah, I think shy away. Some, people, some people have a negative experience. Um, mm-hmm. You're open to it. It's been a valuable tool for you to mm-hmm. sort of your own process in a linear movement, right? Mm -hmm. You you use Mm -hmm. psychics and the experience of the psychic reading in order to keep your own life moving forward through the changes and everything else. But you're also, if you you dial this back, Carolyn, if you dial it way, Mm -hmm. way back, you were raised in an expanded sense of family. And so... Mm -hmm when you sit down and you sit with somebody who's a stranger and they say something that connects you to yourself, you're like, oh, so this is at this moment, at this hour, at this crossroad, this person is a family member. And so that's what makes you receptive. That's what makes you aware enough to look at the information that makes you uncomfortable and look at the information Mm -hmm. that connects you to your joy. So it's that process. That's your gift. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it's and I'm it's ever changing and ever growing. Just today, having like big realizations about the power of looking and how you can stick your head in the sand and you can ignore things and and it's interesting how the more you do that, the you know it festers or whatever. And being able to look at everything, look at your life, your finance, your relationships, your whatever. If there's a place you're not looking, then that's the place that's tripping you up. And it's really interesting as having that courage to just look. And I'm seeing it more and more as, I don't know, I get older, I don't know what it is, but as I dive even deeper, I don't know. But, and having the psychic is kind of the first person that helps you do that. It helps you go, you know, so many people walk through life totally with blinders on and not really even interested in looking. And yet life's so much more rich and messy and wonderful and heartbreaking and beautiful if you do look. And that's, I think, the writer in me as well. Right. But yeah. that's true. That's very true. So mm-hmm. I- I think if, I think sometimes people choose to be unconscious because they're afraid to open mm-hmm. the box. They're afraid yep. to look inside of it. And you are fearless in that way. Do a question with me, Carolyn. Do a question with me, please. Um, so as we speak, it's so funny. As we think about this, like my question, and I didn't even like realize you were going to talk this way, but um, how can I look for the things that I need to know? You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm going through big transitions in my life, just started a new business, like a lot of things happening that are huge transitions. My son went off to right. college, um, big changes in my life. And so how, as I move through these transitions, like how best, how best can you look for the things, you know, the clues, the signs, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> You're my dog. Um, whatever you want to call it, like to, to, to make the best choices and to know which direction to go. Does that make okay. sense? Yeah, that's a good question, actually. It's like, how do I become more aware of the indicators, omens, and um, yeah. signs on the road that lead me on the path to 
where my success is. So there's a few exactly. things, and I, you you have like I gotta I gotta have you back on because you ask questions in such a way that allows me to cover broad material that would approach many people. Okay, your your questions really? are really good. Yeah, they are. They're really good. You have a you have a broad stroke and a fine stroke, but you bring all the pieces together. So I was planning to go to Rwanda and bring a girlfriend home because she had gotten injured in Rwanda, and there was no way that she could simply just fly home because um, because there just wasn't. She had broken her leg, and they'd taken and put in hardware, and the hardware had not stayed attached to the bone and um, she needed to come home to America to get medical care and there was no point in her trying to do a second surgery in Rwanda, Africa. So Mm -hmm. I'd already made my plan that I was going to go to Europe and so um, we did this, you know, Rich and I did this trip to Europe and on the road to Europe I picked up these different pieces of things that were found and one of the things was is that somebody, um, one of the baggage checkers, took a large bundle of keys and attached it to my suitcase when we came out of Rome. Um, I found a little <laughs> pin that had a picture of Mount Fuji on it, and I found um, a chapstick. I found... <laughs> I found all of these objects, and I brought them home, and I asked different people to do a reading on them, okay? And so, so good, yeah. So what happened was is that when I took my flight and I had to connect to another flight, I, got, I, I missed the flight, and this guy um, who was traveling from Japan, who was from <laughs> Nepal originally, he took and did this conversation. He goes, oh, no, you go here, you go here, you go here. And so he guided me through the whole process because I had to exit customs, go down to another place, and then wait for the airline to put me in a hotel for the night because I missed my – because they, they, they made a mistake. And so they said, oh, we're mm-hmm. responsible. But they don't, they don't speak English. In Istanbul, they don't speak English. They don't have any pride of that. It's like we speak other European languages, but we don't cater to English. So this guy mm-hmm. does this whole process for me, and he's like my guide. And then there were so many doors, so many passages I had to go to to travel from Dana Point to um, the countryside, um, basically the border of the Congo in Jeseni, uh, wow. to Africa. And I mean, way in the countryside. And then the woman who I went and got, boy, was she a smooth talker. So each one of those pieces told their own <laughs> story. So look for look for those things. Those things show up for us okay. constantly, okay? And then the other Love thing it. is yeah. that I find that people talk about a certain topic, and you're thinking, boy, I've heard that topic a lot. What does that have to do with me? Yeah. That's the second yeah. one. And then the third one is trust your own intuition. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think that crows bring messages. Some people don't like crows. Wagner gave crows a bad reputation. But... Mm-hmm. Listen to those things, but you are really connected. You are really inspired. And then I think the biggest one, and this one's more personal for you, when you are looking mm-hmm. to get control of a situation, realize that it's not about the control. It's about the fact that you want power in your own personal life. You want power. You right. want empowerment. And control is negative power. And so mm-hmm. when, you're looking, mm-hmm. when, you, when you fall into that trap, Stop yourself and figure out how to empower yourself, and it puts you back into perspective. Um, you know, it's it's a you're an aware person. You're at a great mm-hmm. chapter with a huge amount of freedom in your life, and this yeah. is the part that you should be embracing. And then, of course, I'd like to tell you you need to do a dream board, a visual dream board, and then let's set up another time for you to call in because you help me cover huge Definitely. amounts of material, and I really appreciate you. You were fabulous. It. Yeah. And the power definitely is in letting go. So being able to, if you, you know, every time just to let go whenever I feel like, oh, getting all control freaky, then yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You're so good. Yeah. So fun. Do Very you know exciting. What? Yeah, you're, you're in a place right now, Carolyn, where you're ready to open your heart back up. So totally. let's, let's, yeah. let's do this in the next conversation. Okay, let's do it together. All right, we'll okay. plan it. Okay. Date. Okay. <laughs> all right, oh, my dear. Thank you. So thank good you. to talk to you. Yes. Good talking with you. Okay. Thank you. All right, my dear. All right. We'll talk Bye-bye. to you soon. Bye. Okay.
what an what an inspiring conversation for me as a person. So, um, Carolyn Carpenter, um, interesting conversation. All right. So what do we got? What do we got going on here today? What do we have going on here today? Um, my next caller is um, a great conversation, and we're back to the topic of um, family. And um, let's see what goes on there. And let's see if I can get my next caller to drop into the the pool and uh, have the conversation with me. Spent so many years working. Um, Vivian. Hi. Hi Vivian. Hey. Can you hear me? You? I can hear you perfect. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> did you did you hear the conversation I had with Chris? No, I didn't. Okay. I I, I wasn't able to uh, log on. Because I would, I, well, I wasn't sure what time or anything like that. So, um, I, yeah, I just logged on about five minutes ago. Fabulous! Um, what what an accomplishment to raise an incredibly brilliant child that has the drive and ambition to actually change the world through his own research and studies and make the world a better place. Oh, that's nice. That's a nice thing for you to say uh, I know I really feel that from him yeah yeah so I think that he um, I mean there's other people in your family that are incredibly brilliant human beings and have really done some really remarkable things you know I mean I've known your family for a really long time but when it's your son then you get to have mother's pride and your heart just about bursts open with with the joy of being able to present the world with a child who's going to make so many changes. So it's really incredibly smart, really always has been. <laughs> yeah, he is. He, he astounds me every time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good job. So one of the things I, I'm talking about today is I'm talking about family. And so mm-hmm. um, Chris, Chris, Chris got on the phone and he talked and I, you know, so family, I mean, like a lot of people, you know, basically they, they see family in a conventional sense or some people have gotten used to the idea of a single parent family. But, you know, now families are more complex. There's, you know, half brothers and half sisters and, you know, families one, two, and three. And um, the, I, always, I always love this one. I am the middle daughter from the middle family. And so... Um, the whole psychological dynamic of families is really very different. But in Chris's story, he, he had two parents that had some extraordinary health difficulties and where some other type of child would sort of internalize that and become traumatized by it. Chris transformed that process and said, I have to find a, a way to change the world and make it better for everybody else. So you never know what happens within a family. You know, like I said, you know, he's... He's flipped it over inside of himself, and his drive is, is to make a change in science because of of what he saw as a child growing up. Yeah, I uh, yeah, I'm really um, I'm really proud of him because he he's he's been resilient through everything that's happened, and um, and he's made you know the I, I hate to say it, but he he or. Uh, phrase it like this, but he's made the best of it. Um, I mean, he's going forward in his life, and he's trying, um, you know, his best to to make something of it. Yeah. So, and I mean, I know this is kind of personal material, but you know, Ralph, Ralph, um, your your husband, he received two kidneys, and you received a liver, and and yet the and and yet in the middle of all of that, you still raised your children. I mean, that's amazing. Yeah, they, they've turned out really good. I'm so proud of them. I'm just so proud. They're just good human beings, and that's what I'm proud of. They have big hearts, and and I don't I don't have to worry about them. Sometimes I worry that they don't do <laughs> they don't get into trouble, or they're not out there trying to raise some kind of havoc or something. But I'm glad. I mean, I'm. 
I know that doesn't make sense, but... Oh, it does. It does. You know, I mean, that's really... I mean, for that's their really ages, I, 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 you know, you hear so much about other, um, other kids their age, mm-hmm. you know, out there sometimes getting into trouble and stuff, and they don't do that. And so sometimes that worries me that maybe they... they um, I don't know. It's kind of confusing, but it's like they're not normal, but but they aren't. They they're they're really outstanding um, human beings. Good job. Good job. I you love really them. Have, yeah, you have a really strong strong family dynamic. In fact, knowing you, be friends with you, and being friends with your family, and getting to know your children, your husband, your sister, her children. Um, your mother, your father, getting to know all the people in your family was the first time I really saw a family that worked together, even if they didn't agree with everything that other people were doing. The family stuck together. The family worked it out. The family supported each other. Um, If one person suffered, everybody suffered. Very, very powerful, strong family structure. I mean, I know I've listened to the whole story, so I understand the ups and the downs of it, but it's a very, very powerful story. Hold on one second. Sure. 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 Start to okay. ask me okay. a bunch of questions. Okay. <laughs> um, I take care of my mom for more than 125 hours a week, and wow. um, I go home on weekends to unwind, and it takes me all weekend to mentally unwind because it, it is really stressful, and right. the stress part is really actually mental, but. Um, I feel like I'm I'm really alone in this, even though um, my younger sister is uh, her conservator. Mm-hmm. Um, I wish that she would hire someone to take take off the load off of me during the week, but she's um, resistant to doing that because she feels it's too much paperwork. Because since she's a conservator, it's uh, there's a lot a lot of legal parameters in it. And, my older sister took us to court, and um, as a result of that, my younger sister became her legal uh, guardian and conservator. So, right. which, was, which was the right thing to do. So, here's the thing. I think you're just going to have to take, and you've got two choices here, and you can do either one that suits your family structure. One is, is that you have to explain to Eni that um, you're willing to do 100 hours a week, but you need 25 hours a week off, and that would just be more than a day. And you choose what you want, whether you want somebody to help on Friday or something like that, and then give her a timeline. I need you to take care of this in the next six weeks. Or the other one, which is kind of passive-aggressive, which I don't know, is tell her, you know, I'm going to take a vacation, and then let her figure out a solution for you taking a vacation. And when somebody else has, you know an experience, then she will have to make some uh, changes. But I think you need to think about it in the sense that she's just asking for too many hours of your life. I mean, that's really what this is about. So, and I don't think that, I think that, I think four days is way too much. I think four is way too much. So um, I think that should be the tip top. So when you tell her 100 hours a week is all I'm willing to give, Maybe that will give her the perspective and she'll help to, it'll help her to understand that she just she needs to find another arrangement because if you get tapped out, she would have to take and pay somebody for all the time that you're working. So it's not that you're asking her to spend any money or do anything that's extra. You're asking her to put together a plan that creates a good economy for the future for everybody. Yeah, I, you know, that makes... Actually, when you said... Um one day, for some reason, I realized, yeah, that sounds pretty good. Just, you know, 25 hours. Because I was overwhelmed with thinking, you know, how would I work this? Like, how many days? Like, it would just be days or nights. But 
yeah, like one whole day would be great if I could just have like 25 hours. That really makes a difference. Because it takes me pretty much two days, one whole day to mentally unwind. And then the second day, which is Sunday, I usually spend that whole day trying to get as many errands as I can in. And then I have to be back at my mother's on Monday. So, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. But you have to choose a schedule that works, and you're not being pushy with her. It's a long-term goal. Your mom's in excellent health. Congratulations, ladies. You've done everything you can to keep your mom in perfect health, and she could live many years. So this is a good plan for everybody involved because we're putting together a long-term plan, not a short-term plan. And she's still pretty self-sufficient, so it's really nice. (laughs) I know, I know. And I love your mom. I just love your mom. She's wonderful, but if I had to take care of your mom 125 hours a week, I'd have some different opinions, I assure you. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Yes. And it's, you know what makes it hard? I think sometimes, I've thought about this, I think sometimes if she was a stranger, I would want to do things and help her. But, you know, she's my mother. (laughs) <laughs> which is the reason I moved out of the house. So in the first place when I was 18, so uh-huh. there's a lot of baggage there that I have worked through, but it's still, when she says things to me, I, it's so hard not to take it personal sometimes. And I, I have to bite my tongue, and, and but inside all the feelings, I still have all those. If it was a stranger, it'd be different. I could just let it roll off my back. But, yeah. yeah, it is different with a family member. It's hard. It's just hard. And you know what? You really, it's too many, it's, it's too high an expectation for you to be a caretaker that many hours. And I wonder, that's what I personally wonder, knowing you and everything else, I wonder if this is good for your health long term for you to be under this much pressure and so forth because it's just hard. So, and that's what yeah. I actually do worry about that because I know stress was one of the major issues, reasons why I got sick in the first place, why I needed a liver transplant. <laughs> I think stress really had a big part in that. I think I, I probably could have lasted a few more years with my liver without the stress, but right. who's right. to say? No, no, no. That I think that's a I think that's a valid comment. But I think you need to I think you need to set about in creating an orderly um, conversation with your sister, who's the conservator, about what you need to do to protect your health because the stress is too much. So and and this is your mom is in great health and she has many more years in front of her. So um, we need to come up. I mean, she literally could be you know she could live to 102, 103 years old. So you know. This is not a short right. project. Yeah. So um, we're seeing people live to be over 100 all the time now. So, and, and I think that it's also practical because what if something does happen to your health, what would be the plan in order to find somebody to help? And that's, I think that's a great point in your argument is, is that, you know, what if we had to take and um, replace me because I got sick? So she, she needs to put together a practical plan long term. It's just reasonable from every perspective, it's just a reasonable plan. And I assure you, you have been more than the dutiful daughter. I assure you. Thank you. <laughs> That's really nice of you to say. It's just nice to, to be validated every once in a while. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm going to... Um, you're always welcome to my time and my support. Absolutely. And... Uh, Thank you. Thank you for calling and being really authentic in this dialogue. I really appreciate you for that. Thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. Oh, you're welcome. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. So it's uh, area code 206-806-9965. That's the call-in number. My personal phone number is 714-400-7384. This is called The Deep Reading, Connecting You to Your Soul. Great conversation um, with Vivian today. It's a, a really very touching um, dialogue. So what a, what a really great family, really a strong family, hardworking family. Um, you know, they're there for each other all the way through the process. <clears throat> 
think I have one more caller today. That's, um, I have one more caller. And then at the um, end of the, the conversation, we, um, yeah, um, Ruth. I've got Ruth. And um, it's, once again, it's, um, the focus is a conversation about family. And uh, family is our origins. Family is where it all begins. Oh, it is the beginning part of our story at this point in time in our life. And do I have Ruth here on the phone with me? Yes. Hi, Suzanne. I'm here. Oh, good. Listen, my conversation went a little bit longer today, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do your question, and then I'm going to move on to another topic. Okay. Yeah. Well, here is my question. Sure. My question is, are you ready? Oh, yeah. Okay. How can I allow the process to unfold in my work? Um, I, as I'm writing right now, I'm writing my first book, mm-hmm. and it's just been a little bit difficult to let go. Mm-hmm. So I'm just wondering how I can allow the process to work in my life for this to happen. Cool, cool. Great question. So you um, take care of your grandchildren, I do. Okay, and how many grandchildren are there? There's three that I I care for. Okay, great. So here's here's the way you're going to get your book finished, is that you're thinking, I need to know what happens with the book when I get it finished, and you're trying to figure out the destination. So Mm -hmm. we we don't actually know the destination at this point because you haven't finished it. True. So... So That's true. The first, <laughs> it's so simple, isn't it? But the first step is to finish the book and then trust that the book actually is relevant and has a message and that it will find its place. Because now mm-hmm. books are entirely different. Books are, I mean, people promote books. They do podcasts. They do audio books. They, I mean, books are so different today. Um, it's not the truth. That's very true. It's not what it was once before. So, and I think your book is a really great message, and it's also a book that um, has a place within our society today. So I don't think the problem is the material. The material is valid and helpful and insightful. The question is, is are you willing to finish it and then let go and give up all control and then see what happens with the book? Because... You have always placed other people, circumstances, the care of the family, um, the support of the family, the sacrifice of the family, the suffering, your personal suffering, in order to care for the family, you've always placed that first. Now I'm saying to you, let's finish the book, let's let go, and let's see what unfolds. And if you do this, I assure you, within three months of you finishing that process, you will see that you have struck something and you you will have to do a couple of edits, two edits, in order to get this to the place where it can actually be put into the process of the book, but it is successful, okay? Okay. <clears throat> well, that's really good to know. Oh, good. And that's oh. true. I have had a hard time <clears throat> putting myself first. It's something I've been working on, though. Oh, good. And next time, next time you and I will um, talk again on the show and... Um, We'll work on another part of that question. Today we'll just do um, sort of a short question with you. Sorry. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Have a good day. You too. Bye-bye. Thanks. So we have an aspect coming up, and this aspect is um, it's called Mercury Retrograde, and when I start talking about astrology, I start talking about um, mythology because I think that an astrologer without good mythology is sort of useless. So I sort of have a different way of going about it. And if you have a lot of time to listen to me and you can kind of um, decipher the whole process, you kind of get the message. And if not, um, you kind of lose the whole importance. And so um, I've asked my daughter to... Um, come in and um, explain this aspect so that we have a little bit of time to prepare for it and put her 
spin on it because she's much more logical, analytical, and articulate in her verbal process, and she can explain this much better than I can. And I attended a class on Mercury Retrograde, and I follow the little rules of Mercury Retrograde, and it really does make a difference. So preparation, I believe, is part of the key for um, understanding this aspect. But, like I said, when I start talking about astrology, I think I spend more time thinking and working out the mythological story first, and then I kind of get around to that process. So um, my favorite site for astrology is astrodionis.com. It is the number one site used by more professional astrologers than anybody, uh, any other site in the world. It comes out of Switzerland and uh, Thursdays. Today, it's always free to get your transits, and uh, that's helpful. So uh, let's see if we have Katharina ready to come on and do the conversation. And Hi, Mom. To us. Hey, Katharina, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Really good. You've got exactly five minutes to explain <laughs> uh, Mercury retrograde. <laughs> Okay, I don't know if I can do it in five minutes. I might have to come back and I'll give an overview next week. But um, I have to say, like, it's just such a sign of your uh, callers today that uh, the themes have been family. And then Carolyn asked a great question about our intuition. And so we have our first Mercury retrograde of the season that's going to be entering into Pisces, which is intuition. And then it ends in Aquarius, which is all about our relations to others. So um, I'll give my little disclaimer. I'm not an astrologer. I'm still a student, but I like to share my findings with others. And um, I work in the legal field, and we follow a strict, a strict calendar revolving around astrology and planning our dates and things like that. So it's, it's very useful in business. And if you can plan ahead um, and kind of mark out those difficult periods, like Mercury retrograde, then it's really not as difficult. So, um, as I said, our first Mercury retrograde of the year starts this Sunday on February 16th, and it ends uh, and goes direct on March 10th. Hmm. Um, If you're a little more sensitive to the energies of these aspects, you can start to feel it now. I know I've been starting to feel it now and just... um, double checking my communication. So um, Mercury is the planet of communication and how we think, and it also rules over our travel and electronics, mechanical objects. And so a lot of astrologers bring up Mercury retrograde as kind of a dreaded time um, because sometimes we have problems in these areas. But I like to look at Mercury retrograde as a time for like a spring cleaning. And my mantras for Mercury Retrograde are plan, patience, and perseverance. Because if you plan ahead and kind of just know that, you know, communications aren't going to be perfect and you might have to triple check that plane ticket, it doesn't mean that, you know, you stop all things when it comes to Mercury Retrograde. And just to have a little bit more patience with yourself and, um, uh, you know, just just to kind of be mindful of those things. And then perseverance, because, you know, as we know that uh, all of our choices and the way we live our life is up, to our, is up to us. There's no planet that's the sole determining factor in our fate. So, you know, we just persevere through these times and take them as lessons. So um, uh, something to kind of think of, for retrograde is just rethink, redo, relax, and replenish. And with it starting in Pisces, we're going to tap into our intuition, so paying attention to those dreams and psychic senses. And then at the end of retrograde, on the 4th, uh, it enters Aquarius, and it's all about how we relate to others, so reminding us to set boundaries or maybe bringing resolution to some of those things that are unresolved. Okay, so <clears throat> so give me, um, so this Mercury retrograde um, starts in Aquarius and ends in Pisces, is that right? The reverse, starts in Pisces and ends uh-huh. in Aquarius. Okay, and so, um, so each, 
And so there's times when we have like a double retrograde or um, something like that. So how many days is this retrograde? Every retrograde is 21 days long. Okay. And so this retrograde is about focusing in on avoiding mistakes. You have to be well organized. You have to plan. But in this situation, for this retrograde, um, well, for every retrograde, we're, we're just taking and making sure that we don't sign any contracts. Right. So it's, only, it's not a good time to start new things or, or um, you know, start a new project. But I don't like to panic people with, you know, if you've got, like, a travel um, event coming up or you're planning on signing a contract on a house, um, I mean, it's not like an event to stop all things. We just want to remind people to triple, double check everything and just practice that active listening communication where you say, you know, I think you said this. Did I hear you correctly? Or, and just kind of engage in that curiosity process to make sure that everything's covered and there's no misunderstandings. Cool, really cool. And then uh, we follow the good timing guide, and in the good timing guide within Mercury Retrograde, there's always a green time, uh, a time when good contacts, good um, connections, good new starts could begin, and there's always a green um, period of time where we could do something if we really want to be meticulous and clean and follow this schedule really good, right? Yeah, like I said, it's not a time to stop anything. It's just a time to... Be cautious and just double check everything that you're doing so that you don't have to go back and redo it um, or that you don't get frustrated. Okay. Well, um, we're going to continue this conversation next week. And um, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for being logical thank you. and articulate. And you were great. And have a good day. And it's been really good to have you. It is Suzanne Wyman. I am the a Deep Psychic connecting you to your soul. And uh, my phone number is 714-473-84. Have a great day, and thank you very much. Bye-bye. Become a Goldilocks Productions VIP patron. Receive exclusive access to live stream special and other epic packs. Join the Goldilocks Productions VIP community today.